Hi, welcome to another tutorial with me. My name is Ivan. First off, I want to apologize for this taking so long. I did create it. Uh, I have created a previous version. I wasn't happy with it, so I didn't upload it. And then I just got a bit busy, so I couldn't create a new one. Uh, also, if you want any templates, you can head over to my website for the, for the isometric grids. They are on my website. I'll put the link in the description. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create something like this, kind of like a floating volcano with a hot air balloon there and some birds with a few shadows over there. Okay, so let's get started. So I've got my, my grid here. It's a 20 degree isometric grid and we just want to create a square. Up to you how big you want to make it. I'm not going to make it too big just because... Um, just so I can all stay on the same screen over here. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to assume you know how to use Photoshop, uh, so I'm not going to go through all the little shortcuts with you, just to, to keep the video shortened just a touch. Okay, so once you've created your, your rectangle, uh, your square, sorry, you want to hit the Control and T to transform, and you want to go up here and transform it to 45 degrees. Sorry, not transform, rotate. To 45 degrees hit enter and enter again so deselect it and you want to hit ctrl and t once again and you just want to drag it down so it can fit on your your grid so you can see the lines over here just so they match so i can make um the 30 degree the uh, 20 degree angle and you can just move it about. See, before I used the pen tool, which isn't a great idea. I mean, it is good because you can get it more precise on the corners over here. Um, but it, it, it took quite a while with uh, for the tutorial. So I'd recommend using the pen tool. Um, or you can do it like this if you just want to do a quick edit. Okay, so I've got my 20 degree square over here. And I've got a few images let me just close that one. We don't need that one anymore. I've got my hot air balloon, my gravel, flock of birds, and the volcano. Okay, so let's go back to our floating volcano. Here we are going to use the pen tool. So I'm just going to go up to paths, and I'm going to create a new layer. And going to the pen tool, I just want to bring these down. We basically want to just make it... I'm doing mine two, two lines. Um, you can do yours however thick you want it to be. And right click and you want to go to fill path with my foreground color is currently black. And you'll understand why I'm doing that in a minute. And a new layer. So we want to create a new one. Don't worry about that. We are going to sort that out. Okay. So we create, let's just click away there, create a new one on the side. It's amazing how quick this goes. Once you know what you're doing, uh, it's very simple and you can create quite nice things with it. Okay, fill path, foreground color. Okay, so that's done. Let's go back to our rectangle. I'm just going to zoom out just a touch over here. And we want our volcano. So we're going to be looking down on it. So I'm just going to get my, my lasso tool. Um, actually, let me get my pen tool. Might go be a bit easier to make my selections here. So basically, you just want to select around it. Um, however much you want, really. Uh, I'm going to try and get a bit of the water up here. Like that. And you want to choose selections that actually pop out of the image, if you know what I mean. I'll show you in a minute what I mean. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to right-click, make selection, no feathering. Okay, now I want to control and copy that. And I'm going to paste it in here, control and V. And that is my Hoosive. So let's go to control T to transform it. Holding down shift, just dragging it, just to keep its proportions correct. Just like that, a bit small there. 
There we go. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, now we want to go back to our square. I hit enter first. Go back to our square. I want to reduce our, actually, I want to reduce the opacity of the volcano so I can just see here. So on your square, hold down control and click the thumbnail. It makes a selection. Go back to your volcano. Uh, oops, actually, go to select and you want to inverse your selection so it selects everything around it. Volcano layer selected and hit delete. Oops, not delete, sorry, control Z. And you want to hit the mask button and you want to inverse the mask. So in your properties, you want to invert it. There we go. Okay, and you want to increase opacity some more. Now what you want to do is, can you reduce the opacity of the mask? Nope, so what I want to do, holding down shift, click the mask. So we know it's already adjusted to those uh, corners over there. And we want to go back to your, your square. Uh, sorry, I'm jumping around here. Reduce the opacity again of your um, volcano. Back to your pen tool and you want to make a selection just around creating the volcano outside of the square. Okay. And like that. Right click and make selection. No pixels. Uh, no feathering, go back to your mask and you can see here it's selected in white what you want to see so you want to fill it with white so press X to change your foreground color alt and delete and it brings it up okay back to increase our opacity again control D so that's that part done and we want to do the two sides now so we want to go to that layer, layer 13 on mine, because I've been playing around quite a bit with this. And we want to go to the gravel. So bring your gravel in and just drag it and plop it down wherever you want. And you want to hold down Alt and create a clipping mask. So you can see it's over there now. Control and T. Oops. Uh, I'm holding down Shift, keep the proportions. And you can rotate it however you, you see fit. Now I'm using the same gravel for both. You can change your gravel if you like, have different variations. Um, create a clipping mask, Alt and down. Control T to transform it. There we go. And now you can see, let me just create a new layer here. Go to my brush tool. And let's just change the color to red so you can see what I'm doing. You can basically see the sun's coming this way, um, or pretty much this way, kind of, because you can see the shadows over here. So you want this part over here to be a bit darker. So we'll go back to that, back to that layer, and press Control and U. And you can take the saturation down just a touch, and the lightness. So it creates kind of what looks like a shadow. Okay, and let's go to the hot air balloon. I'm just going to use my um, quick selection tool over here. I'm just going to increase the size just to make it go quicker. Decrease, select that part. Okay, back to my move tool and I'm just going to drag that over to there. Okay, and Control and T. Needs to come down quite a bit. A little bit more, maybe over there. And we'll just stick it over there, hitting Enter. And now you can see it all looks shadowed out, uh, which we don't really want. So in your toolbar over here, you want to go to. Let me just find it quickly. So I always have an issue finding these but you want to go to your dodge tool 
make sure you have the hot air balloon layer selected and just brighten it up a little bit. I've got it wrong here. Shadows. Control Z. It's not working as it should. So let's go to midtones. There we go. So we just brighten that side up just a little bit. So you can see it's still shadowed out over here, but brighten over there because of the sun coming that way. Okay, hot air balloon done. Let's close that one. Gravel's done. Let's close that one. And now the flock of birds. You basically just want to get your magic one to oh no, it's a PNG anyway, so let's just move it over. Moving it there. Okay, control T. Holding down shift. And we can I'll make it a bit smaller. There we go, we'll stick it over there. Enter. So now I want to create a, a layer under the birds, which is over here, which let's just name that shadows just so you can see. And I want to go back to my brush tool and black's fine. Just zooming in about that size for my brush tool. And don't worry, I'm just plopping around just to create some shadows. You'll see it better once I've done what I'm going to do. Okay, so that's the shadows of the birds. It doesn't look great. So we go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. We're blurring it. Let's see how much I'm going to blur it. 4.6. Let's take it down a little bit. Yeah, I've got mine at four pixels and I'm going to reduce the opacity quite a bit. There we go. So that looks like the shadows of the birds. Let's look at it from afar. Reduce the opacity a bit more. Okay. So that's that part done. Let's move out again. And we want to create a shadow. So I'm going to get my square tool again. And I'm going to create one. Holding down shift, pulling along. I'm going to rotate it, control and T, to 45 degrees. Hitting enter. And enter. Now, why has it done that? Control T, to bring it down. Now, why has it created a, an arrow? I don't want an arrow. Create a new layer, rectangle tool, hold down shift. That was weird. Okay, control T, rotate it up here, 45. Control T again to transform it. So now it's up to you how big you want it, um, however, you want your shadow to be. Shift up there. So I'm going to put mine, I'm just going to rotate it a touch, close it out there. Yeah, we'll put our shadow about there. Okay, hit enter, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Yeah, that looks fine. And we just reduce the opacity quite a bit. Like that. Oops, I've just realized I forgot to do the smoke. So let's go to our volcano layer, create a new layer, and we want to select it. But when we select it, we're going to add feathering. So I'm going to use my pen tool just to select around. We don't want to go all the way on the outside of it. go and make selection feathering I'm going to do because it's quite a small file I'm going to do three pixels and I'm just going to drag that over to my volcano okay control and T bring that down quite a bit okay, let's do a bit more and we're just going to 
plop it on there. Okay, so there we go. And once we've done, we want to get rid of the grid. And there we go. Hope you found this tutorial helpful. Don't forget to head over to my website to download the the grid templates I've got for you. I've got the 30 degree and the 20 degrees too. And of each color, black and red. Some people prefer different colors. Okay, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And I hope to see you around. Thank you very much.